Welcome to part one of our build of Tamiya's 1350 scale Mogami, uh, which is a heavy cruiser converted to being an aircraft carrying cruiser. Um, so that's the final iteration of the ship um, before she sank. Um, so interestingly, the Mogami actually started off as a light cruiser, um, and then when they pulled out of their um, treaty obligations. They replaced the uh, primary uh, guns on her for heavier guns, upgrading her to a heavy cruiser. I believe the armament um, that they took off ended up being the secondary armament on the Yamato. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's what happened. Um, and then um, after she was significantly damaged, um, in the year escapes me, 42, 43 maybe, um, she went in for repair for six months or so and at that point was converted to the aircraft carrying version that we are going to build. Now, um, I've committed to building this out of the box, um, largely, but um, there are a couple of things that are omitted from uh, Tamiya kits which um, need to be addressed because the, the build's not complete without them. Um, and the first and um, most important one of all is railings. So um, we will be adding railings. I have um, a number of options. I've got a pack here of uh, sort of generic um, ship's railings aimed at um, Imperial Japanese um, kits. It's a bit of damage on them, but they're fine. Uh, and then I've got some generic stock. These, I believe, came out of a trumpeter kit, but couldn't tell you which. Um, and I've got one or two other bits and pieces of railings in my box of um, etch stuff. Now, the other thing that Tamiya openly and purposefully neglect from all of their ships is the gauzing cable. And if we plop to here... You'll see on the hull sides there, there is no degaussing cable is depicted on the box. Artwork, you can see it there. Um, and there, and it's depicted on the paint, uh, on the paint sheets. Um, and um, Tamiya actually do sell degaussing cable separately. Um, so you have a choice as to whether to leave it off or not, but all Japanese ships would have had degaussing cable at this time. Um, and when you open this up and have a look at it, um, the instructions actually refer to the Megami on this. Now, for me, it doesn't look like there's enough, but uh, we will have to see. Um, so we will be adding some degaussing cable. Now, um, the other thing we're going to replace in this kit is their flags. I'm not a fan of Tamiya's paper flags, so I will be using these etch flags. Um, which I quite like. Um, it's a bit like putting put decal on foil 
um, where you can um, put it in a fluttering pose and it will hold it so it can look quite lifelike and, and have some natural movement. Um, I also have some other items in my sort of stock etch. Um, so I've not bought an etch set for this. Um, they're, they're, um, if you can get hold of it, Edward once did one, but it's out of production. And if you can get hold of uh, the Big Ed, that would cover everything you need. White Ensign models also do one. It's about $80. Um, so going to be the best part of um, £60 or so uh, in the UK plus shipping. Um, so I, I'm not buying a set for this because I want it to be as close to out of the box uh, uh, as we can get. However, I do have some stock etch and we may or may not use some of this. So um, cable reels, I think it's quite likely well, that we may use some of these. These are Imperial Japanese Navy ones. Um, so it's quite possible we might use some of these. Um, not sure whether we'll use these or not. I, I, I sort of bought these with my um, uh, Fujimi kit in mind. So these these are voice pipes. But I'm probably going to not use those. Um, I have a set of um, signal flag eyes. So these will go on um, the yard arms uh, to allow us to put the signal flag um, lines up. Um, and I actually have two sets of these um, so I have a, a larger set and a smaller set so uh, we, will, we will have to see and then this set from Starling Models actually has um, little eye loops that you can attach to the deck um, as tie downs so um, they call them rigging eyes so they may or may not get used um, there is another issue with the, with the hull um, as I see it um, if you look at this picture here, you can see that some of the scuttles have been welded up, um, which was quite a common practice um, in in Japan. Um, I'm not quite sure why, though, I've got to be honest. Um, I'm guessing that some of this was done um, when they were um, building the structure of this flight deck. So some of the flight deck supports seem to be in line with where these have been welded up. Um, but it was a common practice. And I do have an etch set of um, blanking plates for portholes. So we, we may well go around and add some of these and uh, um, that will just add to the authentic look of it. Um, I have a Tom Model Works uh, battleship detail set. Um, so again, uh, this was originally bought with the Fujimi kit in mind. However... Um, it's it's cranes and aircraft catapults and stuff like that and the set will do multiple kits so depending on what the kit catapults look like we may or may not use these um, not sure uh, and then I do have a set of Imperial Japanese Navy watertight doors um, and again um, as long as the Tammy kit ones are okay we probably won't use them um, but if uh, if I feel there's a need at any point, we've always got something to fall back on. So that is my idea of building out of the box. Right then, let's talk paint. Um, much of the paint we're going to use on this build will actually be Tamiya paint. Um, that's for a combination of reasons, partly because one of my uh, Japanese ship kits came with some Tamiya paint in the box so I've got it I might as well use it uh, and also um, relatively recently they brought out um, a Tamiya brought out a range of lacquer paints and I bought some out of interest and I happen to have some of the colors that are, re that are required so in the main we'll use Tamiya paint so let's just go. right time to get stuck into this build and I'm looking forward to this because it's not going to be photo etch heavy. Um, it's not got wood decks, so it's a good old fashioned plastic and paint build in the main. Um, and the first set of instructions starts with a decision on whether we're doing full hull or waterline. And interestingly, if you do the waterline version, you can still mount it on the stand because you've got um, 
the not location points there, which um, on that page, which you can then bolt through into that. So that's interesting. I'm not quite sure whether it'd look right on the stand, um, being waterline, but anyway, um, we're going to do the full hull version. Um, we're going to do the full ver hull version because I think that looks better on the stand. Um, because um, I'm not going to get too heavy on the weathering. It's not going to be a case of making it look like it's been at sea for quite some time. Um, any weathering will be to highlight detail, create shadow, uh, ventilators and, and that type of thing. Um, so not a full sort of Admiralty style clean build, but at the same time, um, not loads of rust streaks and, and that type of stuff. At the, and there is an, a new technique that I've seen um, somebody do that I want to try where they um, put down yellow um, and then the red on the top. So I'm going to have a play and see if, if I can make that work. And if I can, we'll perhaps do that. So I'm um, always good to try new things and expand your horizons. So our build starts with this lower hull and actually um, it's a very nice hull it's got um, all the little seam lines running it it hasn't got the ones that divide it up into panels but um, I'm going to ignore that um, there's a little bit of clean up on the top uh, connection points but it's minor um, the bigger issue is that um, this appears to be slide molded and we've got slide molding seams that um, run and interfere into these weld seams so we have to uh, we have to remove those ever so carefully so um, here for example I don't know if you can if you can see that um, we've got a, a, a mold seam line that runs from the stabilizer there so we need to take that out so I'm just starting that process on this side here as you can see it's quite a slow laborious process um, but um, it will stand out under primer, something shocking. So we're using some uh, very thin, cut-to-purpose um, emery boards uh, of different grades, all of them relatively fine, um, just to get into those small areas. So it's quite time-consuming, um, but when it's done, um, it should look fine. So I'm going to crack on with that and then we'll come back when it's time to put the um, support braces um, in the hull. Right, so it's taken me about an hour, um, maybe a fraction longer, just to work through this um, and get rid of the unwanted seams. Um, it, the, the amount of time it took is a reflection of trying to be cautious not to remove the weld seams and, and, and the details. So some of it was a bit tricky to get to, um, and we used some... Um, uh, wet and small pieces of wet and dry just to slowly get into some of the, the tight little corners but it's come out okay should look all right once it's under prime and paint so yeah quite happy now we've sanded the bottom of the hull and we're uh, we're happy with that the next task is to put the holes in that the screws will go in which ultimately will mount, mount it onto the um, display base so the instructions ask you to drill a three millimeter hole which is basically the width of that recess. But if you've not got one, you can just put a smaller one in and either file it through with a round file or, or use a reamer, which is what I'm going to do. Key is to try and get it in the center. There we go. I don't want to risk damaging it, so. So we'll just ream that up now. Okay, so next task is fitting these um, support braces. So I've already cut them out and they're in the right order to fit into here. Now you don't have to worry too much about removing the tabs and cleaning up on the sides because that's going to be inside. But you do need to make sure that you clean up this bottom tab so that they sit properly down. 
if you don't do that you might find that you have a fit problem with the deck later on because the deck's going to sit on this flat on the top um, and as a result of that it's worth just taking the seam off the top as well it's it's a two second job that if you don't do it could cause you a little bit of pain so let's avoid that now it might not cause any problems if you don't but uh, better safe than sorry eh? the holes drilled out we can now get these nuts in place and they just drop in I mean the fit's perfect um, and then we have uh, a little cap that goes over the top which are these parts here X4 which is part of the stand sprue so I'm going to whip those off and again we don't need to worry about tidying them up because they won't be seen so those just fit over there like that right so what I want to do is glue those in now so for gluing these little caps in I'm going to use some tube glue um, which is actually my preferred glue for working on hulls because um, I, I feel it bonds very strong so um, it seems to work um, work well on this type of thing uh, and all we're going to do is um, just being careful that it can be a bit stringy so working inside the hull just going to dip the part in the glue and then pop it on top do the same with that one and then with a cocktail stick I'm just going to apply a little bit of extra glue um, just around the edges it's a bit about embraces but doesn't need to be pretty in here um, but if I get a bit heavy handed putting the uh, screw up into the nut then uh, this is just going to help make sure it all holds nicely okay so fitting these parts the important thing is that this little tab at the bottom of each one um, is located squarely into these little location points in the hull um, so we're just going to put them, fit them in, dry fit them um, initially. I suspect that the fit will be nice and tight. So we'll just do that all the way along. So let's get that glued in. So quite happy to use um, liquid poly for this. So I'm just putting it on the three connection points, one on each side and then on the centre where that tab's gone into the um, into the keel there. Right, so with that in place, we can now look at the location points for the rudders. So we have a couple of poly caps to put into that. Right, they just drop into place. Um, yeah, nice, nice and loose. And then we have this part here. Uh, which just is a cap that fits on the top there like that. So again, we can just liquid poly that in place. Step two um, is about attaching these brackets and that's the only thing that it's asking us to do uh, in step two other than cut that out as we've already discussed. So this is the um, screwdriver that comes in the kit and it is magnetised which makes life nice and easy. Uh, this is um, a common mechanism used by Tamiya. Um, now when you look at the uh, bracket itself, um, it has one end that's that's thicker um, and that's the end that the thread is going to go into so your, your screw head will end up on this side and you really want the flat bit that the screw head's going to go to facing um, towards the um, bow and towards the stern 
just because it's easier to get your screwdriver in when you come to uh, fasten it to the um, hull supports. So it's a very simple job just to hold the bracket in place and screw it in. You don't have to screw it overly tight either. And once you get some resistance, that's enough. So that's all that's involved in this step is just putting these brackets on uh, two on uh, each side exactly the same. Okay, that is step two done. So step three uh, completes the hull assembly and attaches these sides in. I've already attached one in and what you've got is you've got three pegs which locate into these three holes um, and you can see the holes are elongated so you can actually once you've screwed this in place you can actually adjust it um, ever so slightly um, and these brackets clip into here and you'll see um, it's already been screwed in place on this side but you can see there's a hole there and we're basically going to run one of these little um, four millimeter screws in place. Now this hasn't been glued yet as you can see it's all flapping about. Um, we will screw it in place first and then we will glue everything together because we want to check the fit and make sure that the uh, bow line is perfectly straight um, before we do any gluing. So I'm just lining those pegs up Okay, so that is the two screws in place on either side. Um, and you can see this will flap around as much as you like. Uh, and what we need to do now is just make sure that everything is nicely aligned. It's all right at the bow and it's all right at the stern. So I'm going to start at the bow. My experience is that they can pop out a little bit in the middle. So I'm going to glue the inside first. So where we have that location lug, I'm just going to hold it in place. And we'll glue the lug on the inside and then get some glue behind that location hole against the bulkhead there. And that'll just tack it in place while we continue gluing. Um, along the uh, join line, the water line. So that completes step three, we have our whole sides in place. So in step four we start building up um, the deck um, and that starts with this central piece uh, which is uh, B5. So I'm just going to remove that from the sprue.
and this deck has the torpedo launchers on it. Okay, that is the first section of deck cleaned up, so I just want to test a bit that. So that is going to go in lovely. And you plop it in and just gently bring the hull in. That should go down lovely. Yeah, okay. So um, it's going to roughly align with these. Uh, this is where your torpedoes um, launchers are going to be and they swivel out through those slits in the hull there. So the next job is to flip the deck upside down and we have some uh, bolts, to, some nuts, sorry, to go in there. So I'm just going to drop those into place. Now, there seems to be two locations on this back one, but the instructions show it going in this first location here, so that's what I'm going to do. Then, just like before, we've got these little plastic caps that go on the top, so um, I'm going to use a slightly thicker glue for these, just to make sure we've got plenty of strength. Okay, so that's that first bit done. Um, and then we have a screw that goes through that central one. So let's have a look at that. I think that is a good thing about the instructions on there. Uh, tell these time your instructions is they do have a little picture of the screw so you can check you're getting the right one which I was about not to do I think it's that one yeah okay so make sure we've got this the right way around you can hear those nuts rattling Okay, it's actually tougher than you imagine putting this, this in. Um, it'll be tapping its way as it goes. <laughs> actually, the, the handle of the screwdriver is bending. There we go, that's locked into place, so that's not going anywhere. I'm not going to glue this uh, down yet, I want to put the uh, two other sections of deck in first and then we can bring it all together at once, just in case if we clamp, pinch this together now then it might be a little bit tight for, for that deck and we don't want to have a fight on our hands. So the next deck we do is this stern section. So this is the lower stern deck, um, there'll be a flight deck that goes above this. Um, and what you can see on here is, um, I, there's, there's lots and lots of lovely detail on here, um, but it is somewhat spoilt by these two staircases, which should really be uh, inclined ladders, I would imagine there is no way you'd have these great big wedges there so I want to remove these that means removing them filling um, and replacing the ladders now amongst all the etch that I showed you at the start of this build I don't have any um, ladders so I need to go through my box of etch and see what we've got that might might suit our needs I've 
an inclined ladder there. The challenge is to find something that's the same width and that we can cut down to height. Now actually the narrower at the top, when you look at them that way on, you can see they're narrower at the top than they are at the bottom. So we need to make sure that the same width as the top, otherwise they're not going to go through the hole in the in the next deck up. That's not a million miles away and could be cut to length, so that's a possible. And although these are different scales, I quite often find that um, a, a small 1700 scale ladder will just fit nicely in the hole that I've got on a 1350. So um, I'm not going to rule out anything at this stage. Okay, that's all a bit modern that. It's amazing how much spares you can build up over time. Okay, so we have some options. It's always worth keeping your spare etch because you never know when it's going to come in handy. Now then, this is right so this is from HMS Exeter so that's a 1350 kit trumpeter kit um, we might get away with that as well uh, let's have a look and this, these are graph spay and they're about the same as well so next task is to measure how long they are so Measure that ladder and it is just a pinch over six millimeters. So that one is just a bit small, just a bit long, but might might just do. A decision made. So we're going to use a couple of ladders from the grass bay, uh, which will need a little bit of trimming down to size. So let's put them to one side for now. And our next job is to remove those. Now, obviously, you don't need to remove these. Uh, we are creating a little work for ourselves, but they are very prominent. And when you look at the ship side on, you are going to see them because they're so big that they massively stand out. So I think uh, as much as I'm trying to build it straight from the box, that's something that I know is there and will be constantly looking at. So uh, we need to deal with it. So we're just going to nip off the tops. Careful not to take out any other deck detail that might be around about. There you go, we're committed now. I'm going to very carefully move this, doing as little damage as we can to the deck because um, we've got this um, tread pattern and we don't want to damage it more than we need to.
just smoothing that off with a chisel, making it nice and flat. So you can see what we've done. We've cut it down, then we've gone in with the chisel and removed it. And as you can see, we've managed to get away with doing minimal damage to the deck around it. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a bit of plastic card over there. Then we will um, fill it uh, very carefully and probably finish top the filler with a bit of Mr. Surfacer is the probably the plan. So we've got a, a sort of a, a flat that allows me to uh, mount the new ladder on there. And that new ladder will have to be fed in from the above deck. So that will go in much later on after this has all been painted up. Now this one's a bit trickier because we've got some uh, ventilators on the deck there that we don't want to. Okay, I've got a couple of bits of scrap um, plastic card and again you don't throw away even your smallest um, bits of, of plastic card um, within reason because they always come in handy. So that's the first one there and just glue that into place. So that is ready for filling. I'm going to there. use this Vallejo putty uh, for filling this. It's a, uh, a quick, nice and easy solution and it's easy to work with. Because it has a precision applicator, I can pump it down into that gap and fill that quite quickly. You can see that's relatively mess free and then I'm simply going to use my finger to wipe it smooth like so um, and then as it gets tacky and it dries once it's when it's thin it dries very quickly so we can just scrape away any excess Okay, so that is slightly, now we've rubbed over it with our finger, the level is slightly lower um, than the deck level. So uh, what we'll do is we'll leave that and then we'll probably put a spot of Mr. Surfacer on ahead of uh, painting. But we can now carry on with building this part up ready for attaching to the hull. So... Uh, that means we need to flip it over and we have some more parts to put. So we have a little nut that goes underneath this hole here um, and actually um, it goes into this little cap and then we glue it on. So that is my next job. So this is a smaller nut than we've used before. little silver nut I think well, that seems to fit in okay so I imagine that is correct so we'll just put a little bit of glue 
on the surface there. So that's that first one on. Um, and then we have um, another two of the same size nuts which go into this part here at each end. Now these locate over these little pegs here so everything should lock together. Um, so Obviously I can't turn this upside down because the, the nuts will just drop out so just lining it up best I can and we'll hold it in place and turn it back round. Job's a good one. There we go. So that is our nuts in place now for whatever it is that's going in there. We shall find out in due course. And then we need so eight millimeter. I'll do that. So, put my lid on before I lose something. So we can now screw this into place on the stern. Oh, no we can't because I've forgotten a part. Right, before we um, can screw this down, we need to attach these parts, which are the support frame for the flight deck, and they attach just underneath there like that. Just going to, yeah, they only fit one way, so you can't muck it up. And so, need to just remove the sprue connectors on the top, and then Trim it all up. Just level the tops where we've taken off those sprue gates. Make sure there's no nubs left. Okay, that's looking good. So, that is my first one. And that looks really lovely going on. Fit is perfect. That goes together like an absolute dream. Looks like I've forgotten to clean up the edges of the deck. That's a bit of a miss. We'll have to do that now. Okay, I'll fit this next one and we'll come back to you. So that's the uh, stern deck just dropped into place. And now we're going to screw it down. So this is our bow deck. Just going to clean the nubs off from removing it from the sprue. Right, so what we've got is a steel deck at the front and then linoleum at the back. Um, this is bothering me a little bit. So we've got a moulded in cable reel here um, and when they do that it means that rather than it being circular we get like this D shape so we need to uh, we need to either not let it bother us or remove it and replace it so let's have a look see if we've got something the right size going to replace that so we're just going to nip that off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it because we can shape uh, we can use the center section that has the um, sort of grooves in it um, possibly to go in the middle as the drum so 
I'm just going to keep hold of that for a sec. Um, let's deal with this um, smoothing the deck first job. Okay, we're just going to make sure that's nice and smooth. And then, so we don't lose the position of it, I'm just going to take a quick photograph. And then I know where to put it back. So we will paint the deck before we add that. So everything else is fine, so let's just plop this deck in and see how it fits. It's a bit of pushing down at the front there, but then it all plops in fine. So uh, let's get this fastened down next job. Just be careful you don't over tighten because you, you can distort the deck. Um, if you over tighten it, um, this pushes down too much and then it st starts causing gaps. And, and sink and stuff so okay so that is step five done but what we need to do now is just run some glue around this deck and make sure that that's all firmly in place so I'm going to start at the middle where we can now uh, pinch things together While the glue hardens, I just want to um, hold things in place. So I'm going to use these little sash clamps just to apply a small amount of gentle pressure and just keep them pinched together while I run glue through the um, other bits of the deck. It's all pinched together nicely, I'm happy with that. Okay, so whilst that lot is drying, um, we can carefully run some glue around here. So as far as the instructions are concerned, we have now finished with step five. Um, and in step six, um, Tammy wants us to building up the shafts and rudders and putting the screws on and then building up the display stand. Um, what I need to do, however, is put the degaussing cable on. So that is the next job before we can move on to step six. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish out the fasteners that attach the base into this. Um, screw them into there and then hopefully that will give us uh, something that the helping hands can stick onto and then we can use that um, while we're uh, messing around putting our degaussing cable on.